Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day three. Welcome to WCA of uh, European Qualifier Group C. We have two night elves. We have an undead so far in the playoffs. No night elf. Okay, there is the mask in this group, but the favorites are, of course, two other undeads and an orc. The, the participants today, orc worker, hate love anger, Chechi, and the big, big, big underdog in this qualifier, the mask. And the mask will be tested first today. His match against Chechi will be starting in about five minutes or maybe now. I don't know. Hopefully not in two hours like yesterday where we had some technical difficulties. But I think everything should be in order and should be sorted out this time. We had <clears throat> yesterday a big upset with Rudan dropping out and Juan advancing. Today we have three favorites. Chechi, Walk Worker and HLA. Do we do we say that they're all the same strength currently? That they're all on the same level? I think you see one specific Orc player higher than the other two. Yes, I would rate Orc Worker definitely high up in the ranks. Um, maybe even a top favorite for, uh, not a top favorite, but amongst the top favorites um, in this entire qualifier together with Warchief. Um, Sonic and Hawk, in my opinion. Well, never count out yours, obviously. But, you know, Orc Worker's improvement in the last year is very, very significant, in my opinion. And he has a decent chance. Last year in the Open Qualifier, he ended up third already, uh, right after Sonic and Hawk, and just barely missed the qualification yeah. to the World Championships. And maybe this time, it's his time. With Orc, we saw an amazing Orc play today of Lin. So it looks like Orc doesn't really have a bad matchup if you're prepared for that. And I think this guy practiced his ass off to participate in the World Championships this year. Yeah, he has uh, quite a few ladder accounts and plays a lot on them. Really determined player and I agree with you. He has improved a lot. Um, I think though that he is a guy who really sticks to the standard and tries to be best against the standard. So when you play, when he faces different strategies where he has to adapt, I feel that this, that is where he is running into some issues every now and then. And of course, HLA, the prime player to be pulling out the weird strategies. Okay, of course, uh, that is the orc in this group, Czechy. He wasn't supposed to be here. He was the, the replacement for Happy, who dropped out, um, who was invited uh, originally, but he dropped out because he's not allowed to stream his games, because there's only two streams, it's us and have a line on the Russian side. So he said, okay, if I'm not allowed, then search someone else. And the replacement is Czechy. In the open qualifier, he dropped out against Thomas G, who we saw on uh, Thursday in Group A, and he didn't do too good, I would say. So. What's Czechy's current state? We all know his talent is undoubtable. His micro is superb. But what can he bring to the table today? Yeah, um, we've been talking about this yesterday, I think, already, in anticipation of today. I haven't seen Czechy play his best in a while. And of course, he's not practicing much Warcraft nowadays. He also practices quite a bit of Dota. He has a Dota team where he plays. and. You say that he's a very talented player, and I agree, but maybe he is someone who needs a little bit more practice to be on top level again, at least a little bit more practice. Because seriously, like especially in the open qualifier against Thomas G, he dropped out, that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, uh, it was best of one, right? Yeah. So I guess anything can happen in a best of one. But still, his performance, I was not too impressed. I've seen him way better before. He has to step up his game significantly if he wants to get out of this, uh, well, top two, I'd I guess. But top yeah. two is a very high goal to go for anyways. Getting out of this group, though, I think is uh, he's not going to be too favorite against Orc Worker, but he's really strong in Undead Mirror. Exactly. Chechi is extremely strong in Undead Mirror. So if this should work out in the way that HLA wins his game against Orc Worker and Chechi wins his against uh, the Mask, which is to be expected, honestly, then he may have a good chance. And everyone's kind of counting out the mask, but I hope that he is going to be able to show us more than we're expecting. Yeah, let's talk about the mask real, uh, after the introduction of Czechy. 
Daniel Czekmanek from the Czech Republic, 21 years old, apparently. I thought he's older, but his Skype says he's born in 95. Maybe he faked his age to appear a little older. I don't know. But we were in uh, Inchuan, 2014, and then he said he was 19, so that okay. makes sense. Okay, then, okay, then he is really 21. That uh, makes him the youngest player in this tournament, and uh, yeah. This is him with his Dota team there on the picture. He looks uh, very matured compared to a few years yeah. ago when we met him. His biggest achievement Purity. was probably uh, the fourth place in WEL in the big tournament with uh, some Chinese uh, and Koreans there. He was a participant in WCA 2014, dropped out unfortunately in the group stage. WCA Pro Qualifier 2015, he dropped to War Chief Ridge. In an ama in a, it was a 2-0, but it were amazing games. Wasn't able to qualify through the open qualifier. One Jera Cup semi final, not too much as recent accomplishment though. Semi final in Jera Cup 70, quarter final in Jera Cup 72 and 73. For an undead, very good tournament stats uh, in the current meta game. So this is the mask, not sending us a photo, hiding behind his nickname. Anton Berichkov, 24 years old, from the Belarus. His biggest achievement was the Jera Cup quarterfinal. He just appeared out of nowhere, making it into one quarterfinal of Jera Cup and making it through the open qualifier as a big surprise. His recent accomplishments, not too great. Round of 64, round of 32, round of 64. And in that Jera Cup quarterfinal that he reached, he got a deaf win by Wachi Bridge, who beat him earlier. So it wasn't really on his point, but we have to go in-game because it is Turtle Rock once again and Remo, we saw this yesterday, exact same starting positions, <sighs> close position. Rudan versus Juan yesterday and this game did not turn out well for Rudan and again I have to question the Knight of Choice here, why does he leave in Turtle Rock? What else did he get rid of? Twisted Meadows maybe and something else that he doesn't feel comfortable with but now he has a bad map, a very bad map to be honest, and he has the worst starting position. So right out the gate, very unfortunate start for the underdog. The mask vetoed last of huge, uh, which seems to be attack. common nowadays, and Nomad Isles. So that leaves... Really it, weird. It's the exact uh, same pick that Rudin did yesterday against Wan in the loser's bracket final. So uh, yeah, that leaves Turtle Rock and that is an amazing map for Undead. As you mentioned, Ghoul Creeping, so easy with the turtles here. And that of course gives him the opportunity to get big consumables on the back of the turtle. So we'll see. Will the mask handle it better than Rudin yesterday? Wan's performance was outstanding in my opinion, but the mask, man. It, the games I saw from him weren't too impressive, but was he hiding tactics? Was he hiding his skills? He goes for immolation first, immediate surround, but this is unusual right from the start. And these ghouls are standing on Blight, so they get quite a bit more hit points. And also, there's a coil because there's immolation, because there's no mana burn. This Demon Hunter is surrounded and dies to the coil. He doesn't use the TP. What? And he didn't kill a single ghoul. What was that, man? What was that? This is definitely a really weird opening to day three. To be honest, this was really bad. Uh, you're not supposed to bash players when there's something happening, maybe you're not seeing. But this was really bad. He ran into the base, into four ghouls, into a surround where Narrow Tower was going to be finishing in a second. He lost his first hero. The mask, uh, we we're questioning if he belongs here. I'm sorry to say, but right now, doesn't look like it. Chehi almost level 2 after this little hatchling. He will have the aura. Went for coil, of course, because there is no uh, mana burn right from the start. Now it's going to be so hard for the mask to find his levels. We all know Chehi is very depending on his mindset. Is he confident in those games? Usually versus Night Elf, he seem to have no answer in the late game, but if he has a start like this in games versus the mask where he maybe destroys him if this continues like that, he steals this one. So once again, only 12 experience on the Demon Hunter here. This could be the ideal start for a guy like Chechi into this tournament. The ghouls are going ham on the archers. 
And again, here we see the emulation. Of course, he's still only level one, still only has that single skill point. This means there's going to be one more coil ready for the DK in a second. Does he want to go for the Demon Hunter surround again? There's quite a few archers on the battlefield, three to be precise. So he might be able to shoot himself out of a surround and still has the TP as well. The Slippers of Agility, a decent drop for him. But after finishing the camp, he only got one of the last hits. 20 experience from the Little Turtle, 12 experience from one single skeleton. He's sitting at 32, and tier 2 is soon to be reached by the undead. Yeah, he didn't forget about his graveyard, so fiends will be coming in a second. Everything is hidden, but reveal being used. Dust of appearance, of course, in the inventory. Jackie, by the way, selling his town portal to get uh, more resources. And now, yeah, four archers it, it is. Can he get us around? He gets this around the second in this game, and this is more slaughter towards the Night Elf. What is the plan B for the mask? Looked like he had a game plan with the immediate harass with the Demon Hunter that failed heavily. So he needs his mana burn, but he's still chasing the units here. And he walks into a surround again for the second time. There is still a town pot and he opens it up because uh, he doesn't want to lose so much uh, hit points on his ghouls. And one ghoul is actually not gonna fall as he goes for another surround onto another archer, but DK doesn't want to lose that one. Very close to death actually, gets another archer however for his troubles. Will now might possibly be losing a ghoul, but even if he does, this is a fantastic early game. DK is level two and a half, even more than that. And the Demon Hunter is still 32 experience. So far this game, the mask is completely outmatched by Tschechi. Tier 3 started right away, not wasting any time. And the, the Tier 3 timing is of course what we're expecting in this matchup. And it's going to be so swift and the Demon Hunter most likely is going to be so unequipped to deal with it. Yeah, the mass needs something right now. And that is of course always the battle call for the Naga. If you want to pressure immediately or if you think I have to defend with something and you go for the Naga as well. The Panda needs levels and he will not have the time to find those levels. Demon Hunter is trying to find Chechi once again going for the immolation most likely. Steal some creeps maybe but he doesn't find him. Some kind of immolation creeping but he doesn't really creep. Naga second by Chechi as well the usual hero in this matchup. So Chechi is not going for the turtles on the back yet. He knows that the mask is around, doesn't want to risk anything here. And here's going to be the next engagement. The Demon Hunter bought Boots of Speed and the Circle of Nobility. That was a lot of resources, makes him a lot stronger though as well. And there's Boots of Speed as well on the Naga, so she's very fast for Chechi the Naga, that is. That means that she will not be hunted down by the Demon Hunter too easily. Can he get the opposing Naga? No, it doesn't look like it. Maybe a frost arrow now. But usually when two Nagas meet, one of them will be dead. Jackie is losing quite a lot of HP here. Another frost arrow, but she can go to the shop, get the potion, the resources are there. And I think the statues for healing are coming in as well. Oh, trying to go for the surround of the Player's Naga of the mask, but his, his own Naga is stuck in the base. Can't add the slow arrow. Oh, but oh, there is it. the surround. Oh, yep, Jesus Jackie. Christ. And he hasn't lost a single unit this game, man. And he's level three. That's true. Level three versus level one. The mask got one creep and one skeleton this game. He got his hunter soul up. There is the revive of the Naga, obviously. Ancient of Lore is what he wants to go for. Dryads to slow down the undead, at least to a degree, to have dispel against the skeletons. The Ancient of War is helping, so a little few, a few more experience points for the Knight of Hero. But the Lich will be coming. Tier 3 is ready. And then, of course, the Orb of Corruption hits, the Frenzy upgrade hits, and the Destroyer upgrade hits. We saw it yesterday. Wan's performances versus Rudin. You saw how strong this can be. And what can the mask throw against him? His tech, very late. Yeah, I don't know. He wants to go for the gold mine, but at this stage in the game, he's so afraid, and I don't blame him. He has suffered so many losses this game. Jackie uh, has still nine ghouls available. That is so much. Demon Hunter is coming back in. The, I think the um, thinking of emulation to do just something else. Is pretty nice. Uh, Sonic does it from time to time as well. But yeah, he didn't succeed with anything. Just uh, loses his oh, demon hunter here, and here comes turtle. the creep jack. Oh, he gets it as well. The next coil steals the next big creep. Level up for the Naga. Finds another kill on another archer. The Ancient of War might even be falling here. 
The mask gets a little more, more experience. I guess he finds a good item. Okay. He got the greater healing. Finally catching a bit of a break. Chechi has a 20 boot advantage. <laughs> well, that means he doesn't have supply free for a, a morph oh, destroyer. The upgrade is coming. Lich in production as well. And the undead is getting ready for the push. Not even waiting for the Naga here, uh, for, for the Lich here. Orb of Corruption already in the inventory of the Death Knight, of course. Uh, can be swapped to a Naga, but double orb doesn't really work in Warcraft 3. It does not Dota, I think, but not in Warcraft. So uh, the Death Knight gets the orb for the minus armor, at least for now. Master upgrade is coming, though. Tier, uh, the mask reached tier 3. And yeah, a lot of people were hoping for an upset here for a new breakout star in this qualifier. Looks like it is not the mask, but maybe with an intense fight and with an insane fight, he can turn this, but it looks pitch black for the Belarus player. Third hero Lich now hitting the field, and when that is the same hero levels as the Demon Hunter, that is usually bad news. The bear's being caught out of position as well. First one dies immediately. Re rejuvenation will not be enough to save him. The Lich not yet in the group, but still the ghouls do it, dealing a lot of damage. One of them has only fallen. The Naga in trouble as well. The Nova hitting, and the ghouls finishing the job. Only two Dryads remaining. And a single Demon Hunter on level 1. Speaking of which, he's surrounded. He has a TP though. Is he gonna use it? Does not use it. Uses the heal potion instead, but he's dropping lower and lower. And now he's gonna fall again without using the TP. At least he got level 2 towards the end. But man. What a stomp. That was a raffle stomp. It was to be expected that Czechy is the big favorite here. It was to be expected that Czechy might win this series. But was it to be expected that it was so dominant? No. No. That could have been a ladder game against a 1-0 account. Sorry the mask, but that was not good enough. If you want to win a single map, you have to play better than this in this qualifier. Yeah, you know, it's his first big tournament apart from Jera Cup, so... It's, I think it's only natural uh, to be a little nervous, maybe to little, be a little shaky. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think he was nervous. Yeah, I same, think same can be said for FDSP maybe yesterday. I think he saw the spawning positions and he was like, "Fuck." Yeah, this you're you're under it. pressure like immediately. This is this is your first tournament. Yeah. You are you're pressuring yourself already, and then you see the spawning positions and you have the pressure of the undead right in your face. It is so hard to deal with on a psychological level. I think he saw the close position and was like. Crap, I basically can't creep. What do I do? All right, I need to get some kind of advantage. What can I do right now at the moment? And maybe you thought I have to kill Acolytes with Immolation. But there was the ghouls around right away, and then the hero kill right away. So everything went down the shitter. Oh. All right, next map, Amazonia. Going to be an entirely different story in the early game. He's going to have level 2 immediately. And getting towards level 3 is not going to be too easy, but a lot easier than it is on Turtle Rock. And I imagine he's going to be able to show a better performance here. Uh, speaking of Czechy, you already mentioned his mindset in the last game. And this is pretty good for him, I think. Getting into an easy first win, starting to build some momentum, have the wind in his sails, you know. And feel the flow and have a good start. Seems like Czechy needs that if he wants to have a good day. And yeah, so far everything I can find for the undead. Yeah, we were talking about Czechy's chances once he reaches the winner bracket final. His opponent is either going to be Orc Worker or Hate of Anger. I think he would prefer Hate of Anger. Absolutely. Yeah, and since his uh, undead mirror is really, really good, thanks to his micro. Thing is though, uh, Hate of Anger. Uh, I talked with him a bit before, before the qualifier started, and he said that he's actually really feeling really confident against Orc Worker, Hate Love Anger is, but really doesn't want to face off against Czechy. But of course, most likely that's going to be the case if he's going to be in the upper bracket. And from what I've heard, it's not going to be too unlikely that uh, HLA will be playing Night Elves instead of Undead. Ooh. And there's nothing in the rules against this, so... True. You yeah, can do you that. Can pick whatever you want. Maybe also depending on maps, and then of course, uh, uh, and then of course, it is um, very hard to veto maps as well if you don't know what your opponent is playing. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But uh, when you pick Night of the first map, you have to pick it the entire series. 
I think that's in the rules. Okay. I don't know about this, but yeah, let's focus on Czechy versus the mask game number two. You mentioned it, Amazonia is a little easier for the night elf. This is where the night elves feel home. This is where especially Watchy Bridge uh, calls his playground. How good is the mask on this? Pretty interesting, by the way. He played um, in the beginning stages of Jera Cup, like Jera Cup 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There he was already playing in these competitions. Uh, never made it big, like round of 64, round of 32. And then all of a sudden, before um, the WCA qualifiers arrived, he started playing again. So, yeah, and he made it through the Open Qualifier. This is already a big accomplishment for him, definitely. Time to show his strength, but so far, wasn't possible. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope he's gonna be able to bring a better showing to the table. Uh, I think it is, though. Uh, that was map number one in the big tournament. As you say, nerves are always an issue there. And... This should be the map for him to do it on. Do we know what the last map is, by the way, if the mask should win it? Yes, um, it's gonna be Twisted. Okay, also possibly a bit of a better undead map, but uh, that is far away. Let's focus on this game. Um, very standard, Demon Hunter quickly on the Night of side of things, and the DK a little bit delayed. This most likely means that he's gonna be immediately creeping to level two and uh, tacking very quickly as well. And that makes sense because you can't really run across the map to be aggressive right away. The Night Elf is gonna be level two regardless of what you do. Can't really do anything about this. And that's the beauty of uh, Amazonia for Night Elves early on and why so many Night Elves like playing on it. Question is, how aggressive is the Demon Hunter gonna be? Is he gonna try to pressure himself now? Maybe again with Immolation? Is that a good idea? <laughs> well, it didn't work out the first time, but doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's a bad idea. Or is he gonna try to look for the level three, the more traditional way of playing this? Yeah, that would be the Watchief approach, I think, in general. Circle of Ability, nice start for him. What's Jackie gonna do? He assembles his Clear ghouls already. He has right. the resources for the tech, so he can go creeping. And this is, I think, on Amazonia, the right call to go for uh, level two as well. Very early on, Renegade Wizard. It's very easy to take. You get an item, you get a ton of experience from this one. Almost level two. Here comes a wisp though, scouting this, so he sees, all right, the Death Knight uh, gives me some time and I can continue to do what I want to do, but he is walking right over, as it seems. All right, he's going to try to do as much as he can here to res. Oh, ah, okay. he's going to go for the trolls, it looks like. Oh yeah, does the little troll trick. He uh, approaches with the archer and runs away with the archer, that way the two little guys want to ensnare her, or at least one of them, and so the demon takes a little bit less damage. It's a nice little trick here you can do if you want to optimize your creeping. DK hitting level 2 right now, knows basically where the Demon Hunter is, who has hit level, uh, hit level 2.4. And here comes the aggression. How many ghouls do we have here? 4, 5, 6. That's quite a bit of damage potential. Would love to get some archer surrounds, wisp kills. If the Demon Hunter is out of position, also a Demon Hunter surround. And here we go. Yeah, so far he didn't really find the surface to attack. The engine of war was kind of low. Can he get the archer? Looks good. Yep, surrounding skills on point. We have the mana burn a little late to the party here. There was a one coil and there's two more currently. So the first kill for Czechy in this game once again. Yes, I mentioned the engine of war is uh, pretty damn hurt, but he walks right into the arms of the ghouls. Can he close it once again? New ghouls are coming in. Czechy, okay, he does not want to end it here, but this is definitely archer number two. Dust has been used. Coil saves the ghoul so far once again. Everything in order for Czechy. Oh. And he walks almost into the surround. But nope, escapes just barely. We have two archers lost. And still most of the ghouls pretty healthy. Slowly, they're dropping low, but they're being sent back to the base. There's no boots of speed on the Demon Hunter, so you can't easily chase them down. And now the first Moonwell might be in trouble. Wisps have to come out for repair. Lots of Wisps, in fact. This is also very expensive in terms of lumber. One ghoul might be finally falling. No, but one archer being saved as well. And the Moonwell, it will not be enough. The Moonwell Falls Repair is not enough to save it, and all of the ghouls have been saved so far. Again, fantastic early game for the Czech player. Indeed, 180 gold gone 
for the Night Elf here. He's, he's not supply stuck, but still he needs the healing usually, and his Huntress Hall has been forgotten through this attack. Nice timing by Chechi. Of course, if you uh, place the Huntress Hall right in front of a group of ghouls and Death Knight, he will cancel it immediately, so, so maybe he didn't forget about it but just was forced to put it out later. That delays his tech to Dryads and Bears significantly. On the other side, everything is set in stone for Chechi, and he wants to go for the surround. Of course, the Unholy Aura Hells, there's no boots for the Demon, but he tricks him into the wrong direction, and so surround is not possible anymore. Immediate tier 3 tech once again for the Undead. But this heavy ghoul commitment did cost a lot of lumber. We can see he is on tier 3, or he's getting to tier 3, but he's very low on lumber right now. He needs... 100 uh, lumber, maybe even more if he goes for the tavern for the second hero. And the slaughterhouse also 130 lumber or something like that. The Naga once more. The choice for the mask. DK almost level 3 already. If he just takes the little murlocs outside his main, he will have the level 2 coil available. And what is the mask doing? He's got still 4 archers remaining, so he re reproduced quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. And in his main Ancient of Lore, only now coming up, his tier 3 is gonna be so much later. Indeed. On the other side, Chechi not going for the Naga second this time. It is the Lich pointing towards a little more passive game um, than usual, or than on the last map, obviously. Since it's not total rock close position. There's the Slaughterhouse that we were waiting for, even in the Rubian Tower. So Chechi might be thinking, better oh. safe than sorry, but surround opportunity not working. Forces are under attack. Almost level three on the Death Knight. This is perfect, uh, perfect preparation for the big push to come. The fiends are arriving. The tier three tech for the mask has been started, as and well as the seen. shop. So maybe uh, with a little staff micro, he can oh with a Nova. Maybe another round. Nope. Um, what was I about to say? Maybe with staffs, he can save a few units more. But the tier 3 timing is swiftly approaching. Slaughterhouse a little late, so it's not going to be too many destroyers. Nova surround! He gets it, but he opens it again. Fortunate break here for the mask. DK now a little bit low. The Lich needs to join the party here. Oh, the Death Knight man dropping very low on HP indeed. But the next Nova connecting on all of the archers. Except one, I guess. The Lich now, though, in trouble. There's no coil to save him. He might be falling, but I don't think the Naga can catch up as there are no boots of speed on her. So I guess the Lich is fine. And now another surround opportunity, possibly, with these ghouls here. With only the heroes remaining. The Naga. Is she gonna be trapped? Yes, she is! And there's no way out of this. He used to call on the ghoul to, save, uh, to keep him alive. Naga down, but Chechi has to be careful about his death knight. Level up saves him for now, but there are oh, two the dryads now. Oh. Oh. He skilled death pact in the perfect opportunity. Oh, <laughs> a pretty sweet move there, but the lich might still be falling. There's the slow and the wisp as well coil to block. coming in in one. Here we go. There's the coil and he saves his lich. Trying to go for the dryads around as well, and he gets it as well. How many surrounds have we seen this series? Seems like the Undeads are really stepping up the surround game in this qualifier. Indeed, why on Gaston, man? I am not able to count as high as uh, the number of surrounds that we saw from him and Chechi. Not far away from the surrounding game of WAN yesterday. Tier 3 almost finished for the mask. We see Frenzy already. The Lich will get his orb. So important that the Lich stayed alive. But to save his Death Knight, he used the third skill point, and that means coil only level 1. Yep, that's true. Uh, might not be too crucial, though, because usually you don't really get off more than two coils maximum in a fight anyways, because, of course, a uh, mana burn. But now the Naga will be joining the army of the Undead Lich already a level 2. And I heard another level up somewhere. Level 2 for the Naga as well. Chechi playing this without a Naga as it seems? Okay, now she's go uh, he's, he's going for it. No Destroyer upgrade if I saw this correctly. There it is. A little late in my opinion. Was he? Okay, he was short on gold. So that can happen. The Mask on the other side crept this oh big natural expansion man. Invul Potion. That is very nice. But here comes a big power spike from the Undead. Naga is new on the battlefield. He has the Orb of Corruption and the Ghouls. You saw the surrounds. Opportunity to go for the Naga again. Doesn't even need to surround her. Just finishing her off with ease. And the Town Portal will save some units. Yes, but he's once again far, far behind. 31 supply. 
38 now as he reproduces the Naga. Doesn't even have to, the moon wells necessary to get up to 50. And that is where Chehi is basically sitting. 46 for the Czech player with a, with a magnificent lead. Feeling so confident that right now he's walking into the moon wells. He's gonna fight into the moon wells as well. Level 3 for the demon. <clears throat> this is a big deal. Anti-magic on him. He's gonna be running out soonish though. There's still no destroyer upgrade. It's gonna take a few more seconds, but he's gonna have it in just now. a moment. Yeah, there, there it is. Destroyer upgrade is finished. He morphs the Destro immediately, soaking up with mana to get rid of the bears in combination with the orb, obviously. He's trying to find a nice angle to attack here. And of course, without the moon will, there is a bigger area to attack, and that's why this is okay, that is gone. Now the mask is supply stack, and that is horrible. No anti magic shell anymore. No Naga for him. We'll be rejoining the fray in just a few seconds. Ghouls are doing nice damage. The bears are taking care of the Naga, but that's not where they should be, I guess. The Demon Hunter in trouble, in focus, but he's next to the shop. He can buy the potion of healing, and he did so, but it's on cooldown. The bear's now coming uh, into focus as well, and he's gonna lose the first one to the Nova in the focus. There is n the Naga almost walking into the round again. It will be transferred. Now the Demon Hunter might be in trouble, has to eat the potion again. Destroyer, though, has been killed by the Dryads in the meantime. Speaking of which, one of them might be falling, and so might the Demon Hunter, the Nova. Not there just yet, despite eating one of the ghouls, the Forked Lightning, onto said ghouls, getting them low, but the stat you're still providing so much healing and the last bear will be falling as well possibly should yeah. be doing it Frostborn really likes his dryad flesh at the moment the bears uh, the, the bear stays alive that's so important because he can't reproduce them but the naga really likes the shallowness of the grave and the demon hunter will follow i think oh there's no nuke at the moment but he gets rid of the bear the tree of eternity is trying his best to defend this as well but what's he gonna do only the demon hunter remaining basically with a dryad attached and this uh he here wants comes the kill. nova and yeah the mighty oh, oh the wisps nice nice block oh, but the lich and the naga man the ranged units they can't do it. at least a little show off from the mask Jackie advancing to the winner bracket final. That was very, quick. very quick, very, very easy. Second map was better for the mask, though. It was better. I mean, doesn't really get worse than two or close positions. But yeah, it, it clearly shown through that he is the inferior player here, unfortunately, which is what many people were expecting. So Jackie moves on to the upper bracket final. This was uh, kind of uh, clear already. But now, this is where the really interesting game comes. This is the one the two of us have been looking forward to the most out of all of the round one games. It's going to be HLA versus Orc Worker. I don't know if we're going to be starting sooner.